So I grew up in Los Angeles. I went away to Atlanta for a couple of years to Morehouse College. And then I came back to LA and uh, was attending USC, a psychobiology major. Psychobiology? Right, I was gonna go to med school. Okay. And uh, <clears throat> my life took a different turn. Uh -huh. I started having some um, very interesting experiences that at the time would be pathological, you know. Was, it, was this around what, the 70s? Yeah, early 70s, yeah. And this was like spontaneous? Yeah. Series of dreams, visions, I was leaving my body all the time. Mm -hmm. um, I'd find myself watching television, the next thing I know I'd be on the ceiling looking at myself watch television. Wow. Or I think was about there, Was my, there any catalyst to this, or this was all just spontaneous? It's spontaneous. Things? I mean, I was smoking weed and things like that, but, <laughs> you were. but I stopped. You know, it was like I would have too. <laughs> you know, I thought it was getting pretty bizarre. And uh, have you been reading spiritual books? No, no, no. Like I, I was that, at that time in my life. I had left the church when I was 16 years old. I was more agnostic. Yeah. You know, I believe there was something, some grand uh, um, energy, some, some, something but not God the way people thought about God. Mm -hmm. So I wasn't in that kind of conversation. And um, so when these things started happening to me, I had no reference as to what was going on. And so um, I can remember, and that, that went on for over a year, and I can remember just being silent about it because I didn't want people to think I was crazy. And it culminated, not didn't culminate, but there was a, a point where um, I had a dream that I had almost every night of my life, and in this dream, these three men were chasing me, but they were way in the distance. And so I'd always wake up before they would capture me. But every night they'd get closer and closer, uh -huh. you know. Uh -huh. So anyway, in this particular dream, yeah. uh, one night I looked back and I saw this line of people that stretched beyond my sight trying to get into this small tent. And I, but I knew everybody in line. I knew every single person. And I turned and I saw the three people and I said, they can't harm me. All these people will take care of me. And so I turned around and I said, started screaming help and they turned their back on me. And then two of the men held me down and another one plunged a knife into my heart. Wow. wow. The pain was excruciating. And I just, I screamed out and I died. And then when I woke up, everything was dr dramatically changed. It was just love, beauty. Pulsating. When you woke up? Yeah, when I, I woke up and it was love beauty. Mm. Everything was love beauty. So this beauty. wasn't in the dream anymore? No, I'm awake now. And, and I'm awake now. Mm. Mm. And um, mm. yes. everything is love beauty. And the person that went to bed that night was not the same person that woke up. Mm. Their priorities were different. Everything, everything shifted. I lost all of my friends. Um, mm. And so that began the search as to what was happening to me. Mm. That began my conscious foray into uh, spiritual studies, in which I studied, you know, uh, Did Eastern. Did you stay in school? No. You dropped out? Yeah, I just kind of, well, I had a l number of things going on in my life. I had some other crisis going on. So everything kind of, uh, but I never got back to school, other, that kind of school. Right. I, mean, I went back, I, I studied more um, spirituality. I became a spiritual practitioner uh, um, and did one-on-one -on -one counseling for seven years. There was a period of time after that where I had a, a series of experiences, so I wasn't really any earthly good. Sorry, the one I wasn't really any earthly good because oh. I was just exploring this other dimension of consciousness. Oh, I see. Yeah. So, you know, I had jobs. I worked for, um, uh, you know, different places, prison preventers. I worked for a city councilman. I was able to, you know, maintain uh, uh, a level of groundedness in this world. Um, but ultimately, the spirit was calling me. The thing, the ironic thing is I never wanted to be a minister. That was anathema to me, you know, because uh, my concept of, of minister was a bit jaded. But um, so ultimate, so I, I did the, the practitioner thing for about seven years and had, did seminars, did, mainly, mainly dealt with healing through prayer with people. And I ended up being the director of the prayer ministry for the United Church of Religious Science. Mm -hmm. And so I did all of the training there, then I taught in the School of Ministry there, and I taught prayer and I taught meditation and, and that type of thing. And then in the early 80s, 1986, I was pulled to start my own uh, community, which is now Agape. Right. So it would be 18 years old this November. 
I'm giving you the short version. Right. Okay. Of, of, Were there other things that you experimented with along the way? Um, just different forms of meditation. Which different ones? Uh, you know, I did Rajneesh, you know, chaotic meditation. I did, um, um, I, what I do now is um, Vipassana. So I did a lot of Vipassana retreats. Um, but meditation is probably been my primary technology. Um, and so I've had, I, I would go into the light. Mm -hmm. You know, I can remember when my, um, my first wife I was with, who thought I was nuts at this time, because... Um, you still think you're kind of nuts, though, right? <laughs> <laughs> well, I can remember, Trash. see, I, I remember, because she didn't, you know, she didn't marry the guy that I evolved into, uh -huh. you see. Yeah, right. So I was like, I'm not. <laughs> so it went from, it wasn't, a, it wasn't a gradual boom. You know, it was like, chomp, you know. <laughs> Where did this guy come from? You know? And uh, I remember asking her later, I mean, we're, we're friends now, and I said, now, when I was going through all of that, um, what did you think? You know, and she said, well, I knew you so well, I knew you weren't lying. Mm -hmm. I thought you were crazy. Mm -hmm. <laughs> 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 <That's confidence. laughs> that was, that was, she said. Cause I, I remember one time coming in from a meditation retreat, and uh, for some reason I went to go meditate again. But this time I just laid down on the bed, and um, I started going into meditation, and uh, this is just a, a story about my former wife, actually, or this, this dog. <laughs> but anyway, I laid down on the bed, and um, my hands got extremely hot, the burning, you know, tremendous loud noise in the ears, and palpitating of the heart, and then a deep silence beyond, you know, that, that silence that's real loud. And then I was lifted, and the light, and for it seemed like hours, just kind of discoursing with, you know, asking questions, getting answers, you know, uh -huh. about the nature of the universe. Uh -huh. And and then I had a thought. Were your eyes closed all the whole time? My eyes were closed, yeah. Uh -huh. I think they are, as far as I remember, sure. they were closed, yeah. I had the thought, oh wow, I've been gone so long, they're going to be worried about me. So as soon as I had that thought, I became body conscious again. Uh -huh. Then I ran out into the living room, people were there, and I said, you got to understand what's going on, the nature of the universe. It's a living organism. And, you know, there's no time and space, you know. Everything is love. It's everywhere. I was just going on and on and on. And everybody was just staring at me. And what I didn't realize, only about a minute had passed. Uh, you know, it was like, no, you know, I didn't realize oh, that until wow. a little bit later. It was like, so for, for, in their mind, I had walked in, put my bags down, went into the back room, and they came running out with this fantastic story. <laughs> and so that's why she thought, she thought you were crazy. Yeah, she thought, that was a bit odd. Yeah. How, how did you guys meet? Oh, God. A friend of mine gave me a tape of her singing oh. and said, he, he didn't want me to meet her. He just wanted me to hear the song they had written together. Just tell the truth. <laughs> what he said? I'm telling you the truth. He said, you know, he said, I want you to hear this song. And I, I played the song, and I said, the song is okay, but who's singing? And he said, a girl by the name of Ricky Byers, but she's not going to be interested in coming to your church to sing or anything. <laughs> and I heard something in her voice. I said, no, 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 I, I, I didn't feel her destiny. I, there's something in her voice. She's, I knew her, and uh, I knew her destiny. I knew that, that that voice carried such healing that I had to meet her. Interestingly enough, when we talked on the phone, she was, as he described, <laughs> cynical, you know, I'm not interested in that stuff, you know. But ultimately, she came to sing at the church. He she paid was cynical? He, he paid cynical. me. <laughs> what? He paid me. <laughs> to come sing at the church. Yeah. yeah. You were cynical? Well, I had a lot to be cynical about, you know. Uh -huh. it's, uh, it was, I was, um, I played for two religious science churches before Agape, and I would listen to the ministers and I would kind of see the way one in particular was living after the sermon, you know, and what he was talking about during the sermon. I mean, I, I came into, ironically enough, I came into religious science in 1975 in New York City, uh, and Raymond Charles Barker was the minister there at Alice Tully Hall.
Uh -huh. And my uncle took me to the first service. He says, if you're in New York, you're an artist, and you want to get in show business, and you want to do all of this, and you have all these dreams, you need to be rooted in something. And, so, uh -huh. and, he, and that was his, uh, his system of belief, was religious science. Science of mind, new thought. Not just religious science, he was just open to, he was just open to creative thought. And, uh, and he took me there. And so, um, so I had, I had a, a foundation and I had a, a thirst. I wasn't quite clear, you know, the teaching wasn't enough for what I needed. And when I heard Michael speak, when I finally made my way to Agape, mm. uh, and- You were already living in LA? I was already living in LA. I left New York and uh, I actually thought I'd married Michael. A psychic had told me that I was gonna marry this man from the West and we were going to write music together, and we were going to uh, just change many hearts around the world. Wow. That he had, oh, wow. Like, that he had, that this, he had a beard and a mustache. This is a real dash, okay. <laughs> Yeah. yeah. So that he had a beard and a mustache. So wow. when I met a man from the West Coast, it, when I was in New York, and he, had, and he had a beard and a mustache, and he was talking about, wow, we could write music together. I'm thinking, like, this is the guy. <laughs> it, was a, it wasn't just one psychic. It was like people were coming out of the street going, like, your destiny's on the West Coast. <laughs> you know, you're going to be really famous in music. And I was going, like, oh, good. <laughs> when this man comes who had moved to town, and, and he was... Um, he had a mustache and a beard, and he wanted to get married. And that, people didn't want to get married in New York, not, and none of my musician friends. And those were my colleagues. And uh, this person was a musician, and he did want a family. He had to be the guy. Musician. He wasn't the guy. No, we, we, write, we write music together. Oh, sorry. Yeah. So we do write music together. So, uh, but, um, so he wasn't the guy, but he was the guy to get me to the West Coast. And he was the man that was the father of my two children, who uh -huh. are magnificent beings. Uh -huh. And so it's, there's something to be said about the way that I got to Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. And it, is, it, is, it was the place that I needed to come to. Mm -hmm. And uh, when I heard him say, uh, hello, when he got up, when I was at the service, and I, I did, I was like really not so nice on the phone, you know. <laughs> <laughs> That's another story, another interview. But when I saw him, and I mean, it wasn't love at first sight, it wasn't any of that. I'm just looking at him, and the first thing that came to me was spoiled. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, now she's he, a part of that. <laughs> <laughs> it was so funny. But when he got up and he said hello, I knew he had something. Mm -hmm. You know, so now with Jerry Maguire, the movie, when she says, he, he had me at hello, you know, it's like when he said hello, I said, he knows. I just could hear it in his voice. I could hear that he knew something. And I had been searching for it. And, and most recently to that point was in the African study group. So we would be studying uh, the principles of uh, Egyptology. And, but most of the time we were studying how the truth was stolen, you know, but we weren't studying the truth. Mm. Just how it was stolen. Mm. So, so when he started to talk, I just started to cry. You know, because it was everything that I believed. Mm. Yeah. It was everything I believed. And I was like, oh. And the more I came to Agape, the more I wanted to be there and not get paid. And mm. one day I had to go when I wasn't getting paid. And that, that was the end of my marriage. Really? You're not getting paid? <laughs> so no, I just got to go. I, got, I, have to, I have to be there for that sermon. I have to be there. So lo long before we were songwriting partners or husband and wife, like he was my teacher. He was, my, he was a teacher that I had sought because it, when he speaks, I know, you know, I know that if I had heard that when I was 25, my destiny would have been totally different. You know, it would have had a larger context sure, sure. Yeah. than name it and claim it. Right. You know. Yeah.